Welcome back to my DaVinci Resolve tutorial series. If you missed the first part, no worries, you can find the link to that in the description below. Today we're diving into the world of nodes. Nodes are like the secret source in Resolve, and getting comfy with them is the key to mastering this tool. I'm here to break down all the different types of nodes, their purposes, and how I personally tackle them. So let's not waste any more of your valuable time and jump straight into it. Let's start with the basics of nodes. Picture the node graph as your organizational hub, where each node represents a distinct layer of your grade. Think of it as a segment of your overall grading process. For instance, your initial node may encompass basic corrections, involving adjustments to color wheels and overall tonal changes. While it's entirely possible to perform a range of modifications within a single node, DaVinci Resolve truly unleashes its power when you begin combining nodes. Imagine you're satisfied with the initial grade for this shot, but you wish to tweak a specific detail. Attempting to accomplish this within the same node can be challenging. If, for instance, you aim to isolate and adjust Courtney's skin tone, attempting to do so within the confines of a single node limits the scope of your adjustments. This limitation becomes evident when using tools like Windows to select specific areas. The adjustments made within that window affect the entire grading of the shot in that node, hindering your ability to work on a specific part of the image while leaving the rest untouched. To overcome this obstacle, the key is to employ different nodes strategically. By compartmentalizing your grading tasks into distinct nodes, you gain the flexibility to fine-tune specific elements of the image without compromising the overall integrity of your initial grade. This approach empowers you to achieve a more nuanced and refined final result, unlocking the full potential of DaVinci Resolve's capabilities. To maintain a structured and organized workflow, DaVinci Resolve offers a helpful feature where you can label nodes for better clarity. Simply right-click on a node to access the option to change its label. In our case, I'll designate the initial node as primary, since it encompasses corrections that influence the entire image. Now let's enhance our organizational approach. By pressing Alt plus S, a new node is added, forming a serial node. This means that everything adjusted in the previous node serves as the input for the subsequent one. The beauty of this lies in its sequential nature. Imagine it as a chain where each link builds upon the changes made in the preceding node. Using Alt plus S ensures the creation of a serial node, and the new node inherits all modifications from its predecessor. For instance, if the initial node introduced a significant yellow tint, the subsequent node will commence with that alteration. To illustrate, if I were to deactivate or disable the first node by clicking on its number, the image reverts to its original state, akin to having only one node connected to the input. Essentially, the grading process flows from left to right, mirroring the sequence of nodes. This systematic arrangement not only aids in keeping our adjustments organized, but also provides a clear visual representation of the flow of corrections, making our post-production work more efficient and comprehensible. Our approach to color grading involves a sequential process within the node graph. Initially, we'll impart a yellow tone to the image, and subsequently, we'll desaturate it. This progression exemplifies the essence of serial nodes. They operate in a systematic order. Picture it as a step-by-step -step recipe where each node adds a distinct flavor to the final dish. Crucially, the order in which these nodes are arranged significantly impacts the final result. If, for instance, we opt to make the image blue in the first node and then desaturate it in the second, the overall effect will be distinctly different. It's worth noting that the order of operations within the node graph can be manipulated by selecting, deleting, and reconnecting the nodes accordingly. This flexibility allows us to experiment and achieve various visual effects based on the specific arrangement of our nodes. In essence, the node graph serves as our visual roadmap, guiding the flow of adjustments from one node to the next. Understanding and manipulating this sequential process is key to achieving the desired aesthetic in our color grading. Let's designate the next one as the skin node. In this particular instance, my goal is to alter the color of all the skin in the image. To achieve this, I use a qualifier, employing the Kia to draw on specific areas of the skin. Next, by pressing Shift H to see my selection, I fine tune the key. Let's say, for the sake of this example, I want to turn all the skin blue, a somewhat unconventional choice, but useful for illustrating how the nodes interact. Now, within this new node, I have the qualified portions of the skin. If I toggle this off and return to the primary node to make adjustments, then reactivate the skin node, something interesting occurs. The skin node is searching for a particular skin color that has been altered in the primary node. Consequently, I must rekey elements to align with the changes made earlier. 
This emphasizes the crucial point to keep in mind when working with serial nodes, they are interconnected, and modifications in earlier nodes affect subsequent ones. To circumvent this, I'll delete the skin node and opt for a different approach. With the first node selected, I navigate to Nodes, choosing to add a parallel node. Unlike serial nodes, a parallel node simultaneously adjusts elements rather than sequentially. Now, when I manipulate the hue to create the distinct blue skin and make alterations in the primary node, the skin color remains unaffected. This is because the parallel node derives its key from the input, not from the primary node. It's a clever method, particularly when dealing with multiple adjustments in later nodes. We've covered both serial and parallel nodes. Now, let's delve into a node that shares similarities with the parallel node, the layer node. To explore this, I'll start by resetting the nodes. The layer node operates akin to a parallel node, but with a crucial difference. It functions as a composite layer. To illustrate, I'll add another serial node and then select it, navigating to Nodes and choosing Add Layer Node. This node looks nearly identical to a parallel node. This layer setup can seem a bit peculiar at first. Right-clicking on it allows me to add inputs. The topmost input is the bottom layer, while the bottom right input is the top layer. For example, if I set my first layer to the bluest possible and the second layer to the most maximum orange, the resulting image will appear orange because the orange layer is atop the blue layer. By rearranging the connections, I can switch their positions, placing the blue layer over the orange layer. This compositing of two images resembles the layering concept in Photoshop or After Effects. Moreover, I can adjust the opacity using the key output to blend between the layers. Similar to Adobe After Effects, layer nodes support masks. For instance, I'll employ a key grabbing parts of the image, in this case, the subject. As I select it, the keyed image is layered onto the orange layer, giving us the subject on the orange background. This layering capability becomes especially useful when, for example, you want to create that classic teal and orange look. We have two more nodes to explore, and the first one is quite straightforward. It's called an outside node. To demonstrate, I'll create a serial node and draw a circle. Right-clicking on this node and selecting Add Outside Node generates another serial node with the inverse alpha channel. As I move the window around in the first node, you can observe the corresponding movement in the second node. Let's make the first node blue and the second one orange. The second node essentially mirrors the alpha channel of the first. This feature proves exceptionally useful for tasks like vignettes. For instance, I can create a circular window, adjust the inside, and then employ an outside node to fine-tune the vignette. This approach offers more nuanced control compared to simply applying a vignette on top of the primary node. It's a valuable tool for enhancing precision in tasks like vignette creation. The final type of node we'll explore is known as a splitter combiner node. To illustrate, I have my primary grade, and by navigating to the Nodes menu and selecting Add Splitter Combiner Node, the image is divided into three channels, red, green and blue. This node serves a variety of purposes. It allows for the remapping of channels, facilitating intricate colour effects. Additionally, it enables targeted actions such as denoising or blurring specific channels. For instance, one might choose to blur only the blue channel, enhancing footage cleanup. Another creative application involves subtly diffusing the shot by blurring either the red or green channel. While these functionalities may not be utilized frequently, having an understanding of them expands your toolkit and provides creative possibilities. This knowledge offers a nuanced approach to color grading, allowing for unique and specialized adjustments. And there you have it, loads of info to soak in. Hope this video shed some light on how to use Nodes and Resolve. Right now, I'm still rocking Premiere Pro, but I'm slowly using DaVinci Resolve more and more in my workflow. I'm still on the learning train myself, so if you've got any burning questions, toss them in the comments below. It would be awesome if you could subscribe and give this video a little like. And in the meantime, keep it chill and happy editing.